This year the school is committed to keep peace as the focus of everything that we do and we'd already had a big celebration for Peace Day. So looking at the calendar, I overheard the history teachers talking about the Holocaust Memorial Day and we were looking for something that would engage the students' emotions and not just, not just their um, lectures or not just pictures but that's something they could really engage with. So the idea of an exhibition seemed to really hit the spot that we would open with the video that William made um, in his history class and he put a huge amount of thought into it and his big thing was that we are all equal and that really if we look at each other human to human there should be no reason why we can't just accept each other as we are. Ms O'Brien asked us to research the Holocaust for the upcoming Holocaust week and she gave us options and I said I would do a video for it. Probably one of my favourite slides would be the hands and how it comes after unity. There is no unity in this world yet, but the video I think the strongest message would be the silence to remember. So that was the focus of his piece and then because the boy in the striped pyjamas is on the English course, it seemed appropriate to read a piece from that and I had two candidates who offered themselves very willingly um, and then a third came along. These two innocent young boys who have no idea what they're doing, they think they're going inside because the soldiers feel a bit of mercy for them, leaving them out in the rain to get sick and then they're left there, nothing but each other. And they picked the pieces themselves. I really had very little to do with any of it. Um, and they opened the exhibition and then the creative space to try and pull together all of the different strands. If we're going to make peace the focus, we have to introduce it across a whole range of subjects and a whole range of students. So it has to be accessible. Pictures are great. You don't have to read. You don't have to spend too much time just passing through it. Walking is an exceptional way of engaging emotionally with something. So it made sense to have an exhibition that you could walk through and students being what they are, and teachers being what they are, if they had a task, if they could fill in a few questions, then I knew that they would engage with the whole piece. So we did a little question leaflet for them to fill out. So then the three strands came together, the history of what actually happened, the visual that came through the arts teachers who were saying, oh, I think you should have pictures. And then the English teachers who were saying, but you've got to reflect on all of this. You've got to feel it. So that brought this whole piece together. We've got the visual, we've got the audio, but more importantly, it came from the work that the students put together themselves. Lauren asked us to research about the Holocaust and just, we had to write pieces, we could write poems or just a little short reflect about the Holocaust and what we thought of it because no matter how many history tests you do, you're still not going to experience it where here when you walk around and see what actually happened. It just makes it completely different. I wrote a piece called Prison Camps. Um, it's basically what the description of how the uh, camps were to, in my eyes. Um, when I wrote it, I didn't see many um, pictures um, before I wrote it, but after I saw it, um, I realised how it was a complete understatement of how I described it. I described it as dark, dreary, cold, bleak, and it was way more than what I said. It was horrific, it was disgusting. It was like their lives were ripped away from them. My teacher had given us a project to do in the Holocaust. She told us to write either a poem or a paragraph. So I went home that evening and I sat in my kitchen for about four or five hours trying to think of what to do. This is a poem about the Holocaust. It's called The Holocaust Revealed. I am the evil of man. I exist because I can. I am the fear of the world, the nightmare unfurled. I am the mass destruction, the terror reproduction. I am the slaughter unleashed, the innocence that weeped. I am the Jews that were gassed, the souls now long past. I am the black smoke in the air, the uniforms that did not care. I am the screams that were lost. I am the Holocaust. I know that I had to walk through it twice because the first time I 
kind of didn't really understand it, you know, I didn't really take any of it in. And then I went around a second time and it really just, it kind of hits you. And you don't really know what to say at first. You, you kind of just stand and you're thinking about it. And I know for me, it was really scary to see like how thin they were. I know there's a picture and it was just a couple of bodies in the back of a van. And there's just one man's leg was just kind of sticking up and it was so thin. It just, it really freaked me out to be honest. And it just, it makes you think how horrible it must have been for them because you know, we, I know that you know if I don't have my breakfast in the morning, I'm starving and I think I'm so hungry. And you just, you imagine how hard it would have been for them when I'm so hungry after about, you know, an hour and a half. And it's just, it's really horrible to think about. And yeah, just it kind of sticks with you, you know? It's, like you don't really know what to expect when you're coming to these. Like you think, oh, I'm gonna go, hear people read and then leave. And then, but you don't really like know that you're gonna feel so like shocked when you see some of the stuff. Like it really hit home for me because like it was just so hard looking through the photos and looking to see Anne Frank and oh, it was just horrible to see all this. She'd be the same age as us now and we're like wondering what we're gonna get for Christmas or like what we're gonna eat for dinner and she was just wondering if she'd stay alive for a day, one more long day. English teacher had been asking them to write a piece on the Holocaust and when she read their pieces she was really blown away with the power of them and she came up with the idea of the hands and she asked them to write on a hand the word that came to them when they listened to the stories that, and the poems that they read. So I asked her to make me another hundred hands um, because I felt that that would be a really good way to finish the piece. We wanted students to engage emotionally with the display and really we wanted to create a sense of hope that from something so horrific we could create an emotion that left you with the empowerment of feeling that things can change and generations hence this is in the past. It's important to remember it so we never let it happen again. But it's important to empower young people to understand that they have an individual strength and that one person, one person can change so much.